Thank you all. Today is IFPX 1251st day of our uh, webinar, continuous webinar, uninterrupted webinar for last this days. Today our guest is Dr. Sapna Gupta, MD, Humanipati. She had done many wonderful presentations. Presentations in our, wonderful presentations in our platform. There is a proverb in Malayalam. Kashandikyum asuyakyum maitanilla. That means there is no medicine for baldness and uh, Uh, jealousy. So today, one of the subjects, our doctor, Sapna Gupta, is going to say one of the part that is uh, baldness or the loss of hair or hair that, 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 uh, it, it comes under the... So Dr. Sapna is an internationally famous homeopathy in the field of homeopathy for the past two decades. She is secretary of HMIA Gualia. She has presented several research papers in the international and national level homeopathy conferences from time to time and has won many awards. She has attended various international conferences. Excellence in Healthcare Award by Dainik Bhaskar in 2021. And in 12, 2012, Dr. Jugal Kishore Memorial Award by Delhi Board of Homeopathy. In 2010, Ayush Tatna Award by Ayush Medical Association, New Delhi. Fellowship awarded by Faculty of Homeopathy, Malaysia. Canada House of Commons Award by MP Dr. Gur Prakash Singh. Mal, Malhi, Yamaphobio Award by Pahom, Malaysia, Gwaliar Gaurav Award by Gwaliar Vikas Samiti. These are, the, her by, these are some of his, uh, her achievements in her life. And today she is dealing the subject, homeopathic approach in the treatment of alopecia areta. We welcome you, Doctor. You can start now. After it, after the 45 minutes, there will be a discussion part. So, right. do it. Thank you, Doctor. You are welcome. You can start now. Thank you very much for a nice introduction, sir. Uh, my screen is visible to all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, I can start uh, right away. Uh, uh, slight, you have to make it louder. A little bit louder. louder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So today I'll be talking on alopecia areata. Just imagine the situation when your immune system, your body's defense, your watchman, your bodyguard attacks you. He's the one who is supposed to be protecting you. But in turn, when he attacks you, what can happen? I hope everybody remembers the sad demise of Indira Gandhi, our ex-Prime Minister, who was assassinated by her own bodyguard. Same is the situation in case of alopecia areata, where our immune system, which is supposed to protect us, attacks us. Hair is something everyone likes to have uh, uh, very good hair every day. If your hairstyle is not good for a particular day that depresses the mood of an individual, just imagine the case in which people are suffering from alopecia areata. They not only have a physical disease, but they also have the psychosocial repercussions on their health and their mental state. Uh, we have a lack 
follicles there in our um, scalp. And then uh, basically hair is going through different cycles of growth and constant and then decay, wherein our follicles, they uh, regenerate new hair. So alopecia areata basically happens when the anagen, that is the growth phase in which 85 to 95 percent of our hair should be, that comes into the telogen, that is the resting uh, phase, wherein no new hair growth is done and hair are being um, thrown out of the body or they are basically with the ring off. So if we treat this root cause, then we can treat about, think and treat about alopecia areata. There was, alopecia was recently in the news when in the Oscars, uh, American actor and rapper, everyone knows about Will Smith. He slapped the comedian uh, who was uh, basically hosting the Oscars because he uh, basically ridiculed Will Smith's wife who was suffering from alopecia areata. And similarly, our uh, famous Bollywood actress, uh, Samira Reddy, she also had alopecia areata and she also specifically spoke about alopecia areata and how she's taking homeopathy to keep it at bay. So let's start with alopecia. It's basically an autoimmune disorder in which our immune system attacks the follicles and destroys the hair, which is not supposed to be done. Uh, it is a polygenic disease. Polygenic, why? Because a lot of genes are involved. And if it is there in a particular person's family, then he will he's more at a risk of having this particular disease. Recently, uh, in a genome-wide association study, it was analyzed that there are 14 gene, uh, genetic loci that are responsible for alopecia areata. Now, this disease causes hair loss on the scalp face and sometimes other body areas like under the arms or on the legs and it is often uh, most often the people lose their hair in circular coin sized patches on the scalp but in more severe cases they may even lose all of their hair now let us have a look at some of the facts related to alopecia 160 million people worldwide suffer from alopecia and in the u.s alone 6.7 million people suffer from it and 80% people show the signs of the disease before the age of 40 and what we are experiencing uh, every day in our clinics that by the age of 20, 40% people experience some symptoms of alopecia and women are uh, more likely to develop than men and the higher probability is more, upon, uh, more among the Asian, Black and Hispanic individuals. The term alopecia stands for bald and areata stands for patchy. So any hair loss that is patchy, that is basically denoted to alopecia areata. Now let's discuss some of the types of alopecia. It can be patchy as shown in the particular figure. One or more coin-sized, usually round or oval patches on the scalp. It can be totalis when hair loss is across the entire scalp, when you lose all of your head hair, then it can be totalis. And sometimes it is also, it, uh, the patchy can also progress into universalis, where the hair loss is not only uh, on the entire um, scalp, the hair part, uh, the head part, it can also be from the eyebrows and the eyelashes. And there are some other rare types of alopecia. One is diffuse, as shown in the picture. Uh, you have sudden unexpected thinning of hair all over the scalp in this case. And it, if it hair loss is in a band for a sort of a form on the sides or even it can be at the back of the head, here it is in the back of the head, that is uh, basically alopecia ophiasis. Now let's look at some of the primary symptoms. Alopecia affects primarily the hair but in some cases, there are nail changes as well. Now, people with this disease are usually healthy otherwise and have no other symptoms. Now, what are the hair changes that we can see in cases of alopecia? It basically begins with sudden loss of round or oval patches of hair on the scalp, but any part of the body may be affected, such as the beard area in men or the eyebrows or the eyelashes. And around the edges of the patch, it is seen that there are often short broken hairs like exclamation point hairs 
that are narrower at the base than at their tip. And there is usually no sign of a rash, redness or scarring on the base bare patches. Some people may also experience tingling, burning or itching or patches of skin right before the hair falls out. Now, when the patient comes to us, the patient suffering from this, they want to know what will happen uh, with my hair. Uh, will I be treated or what sort of repercussions can I have? So these are the possibilities related to hair changes. The hair sometimes regrows within a few months. It may look white or gray at first, but may regain its natural color over time. Additional bare patches also develop. This is quite uh, difficult because during our practice, it happens while we are having treatment, new patches still can appear. So it's quite challenging to satisfy your patient. And sometimes when you are not able to prescribe properly, then Dr. also just a minute, Dr. Just a minute. Uh, have you uh, want to show the uh, slides? Slides? You don't have slides, sir. Are they not visible? Yeah, yeah it is not visible. Oh, that was okay, okay. I'll just show it again. Yeah, okay. They are now? Yeah, okay, okay. Just a moment. So this was my first slide. These are the facts which I have just spoken about. These are the types of alopecia areata. These are the symptoms we have just discussed. So we were here on the possibilities uh, of related to hair changes. So when these bare patches develop, it is quite challenging for us as physicians to satisfy the patients because patients generally, uh, they come with some lack of um, confidence in us as homeopaths. So sometimes hair regrows in the first patch while new bare patches are forming. Small patches join to form larger ones and in rare cases, hair is eventually lost from the entire scalp called alopecia totalis. And it is difficult to treat because the smaller ones have formed the bigger situation. And there is also a progression to complete loss of body hair, a type of disease called alopecia universalis. This is also a rare possibility. Now, what sort of hair changes or what can happen? This is uh, what we can tell patients. Now here tends to regrow on its own more fully in people who have less extensive hair loss or who have a later age of onset and who have no nail changes and there is no family history of alopecia. So in those cases, sometimes they can regrow. But in most of the cases, when you have a lot of hair loss and if the, the age of onset is quite late, uh, quite early, then there are difficulties in the hair regrowing on their own. And it's also a challenge to the uh, physician as such. Now, if some uh, nail changes are there, such as ridges and pits, they are there in people, then the extensive hair loss will be there. So if you have nail changes, then uh, that means that you are suffering to a higher degree and it will take a lot of time. And sometimes these things are again going to reappear. Now, these are some of the causes related to alopecia areata. It is an autoimmune disorder. There are genetic reasons associated with if your uh, sibling or your first degree relative has suffered from this disease, then you are also prone. And those people who are suffering from other conditions, the risk factors are more like in case of psoriasis, thyroid disease, if you are suffering from vitiligo, asthma, hay fever, or atopic dermatitis, then the risk of having alopecia increases. And sometimes there are uh, <clears throat> drug-induced alopecia, like in case of people who suffer from uh, cancer, we have seen that they have the problem of uh, alopecia totalis. It is due to this drug nivolumab, uh, which they take. And it is basically said like uh, the drug is working when you have alopecia. So for cancer, uh, falling, having alopecia is a good sign, but then uh, it can be caused by a lot of drugs as well. And uh, a few research studies have suggested 
that uh, people who uh, smoke at least five cigarettes per day or who have been uh, smoking since the past 10 years, they have more risk associated with this particular alopecia. And some recent researches have also shown about a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies that have been linked with alopecia, like vitamin uh, D. If the levels are low, then uh, people are more prone to it. And in case of vitamin A, it has been found in some studies, which are still in the nascent stages though. Like if the vitamin A is not at the optimum level, whether it is low or whether it is high, so people will have severe symptoms of alopecia areata. Similarly, many studies have shown about zinc, magnesium, vitamin B12. So these are the uh, deficiencies and these are the things which we also need to um, see in order to take a particular case and solve it properly. So here, the diet part is also important because apart from what medicine we are going to uh, prescribe, if the patient is not taking a diet, a proper diet, we will not be able to treat him very well. Like vegetables, like broccoli, sweet potatoes, vegetables should be more incorporated in the diet as well as fruits, which are basically citrus in nature, cherries like apples and healthy fat should be taken. And uh, apart from this, whole grains, brown rice, rolled oats, quinoa, uh, like that should be incorporated in the diet. And even legumes like chickpeas, lentils, black beans, and proteins should be incorporated along with some spices. Like turmeric is very much known to reduce the inflammation. So in cases of alopecia, there are the, uh, certain things happen uh, because of that there is inflammation in the follicles and growth is not taking place. So if you take a proper diet that is more associated uh, with having these uh, things, then patients will be in a better condition. And these are some foods that need to be avoided, like refined sugars uh, that we have in the form of, it can be in the form of soda, it for, can be in the form of cookies, ice cream. We don't know how we are incorporating sugar these days because everything is containing extra sugar. Apart from that, fast food. Nowadays, children like to have fast food round about every day. And that is why we are seeing a greater number of children who are suffering from alopecia. And refined grains like white bread, white pasta, instant noodles, bagels. And in some studies, it has also been uh, also found that wheat contains gluten and that inflames the hair follicles. And uh, it is recommended to avoid it also. And uh, when people get lazy, they get frozen dinners and these ultra processed snacks, foods and meals, they make us prone to many diseases and even processed meat products and even gluten uh, containing foods, which I just mentioned, like breads, tortillas, wraps, cakes. So these foods need to be avoided in order to stay away from alopecia. Now let's start with our first case related to alopecia. Now this case is of a 25 year old man. He presented with massive hair loss during the past six years that first appeared as a loss of hair at a certain area of the scalp and rapidly progressed to involve 70% of the scalp as well as some areas of the patient's beard and eyebrows within three months. Now this man, he was suffering from alopecia since the past six years he had lost a lot of hair but since the past three months the, the intensity of hair loss had increased and it covered 70 percent of the scalp and even his beard and eyebrows now this patient he complained of itching on the scalp in patches with pain in the scalp on touching he also had a craving for alcohol See, for a particular homeopath to get to the similimum, we need to dig deeper. And it's not very easily the patients are going to tell you your habits. You have to dig deeper. And for that, you need to keep asking him questions. And sometimes the patients, they laugh at us. Why are you asking such questions? And like craving for alcohol, he had a lot of craving for alcohol. And uh, he loved to sing folk songs and was quite famous in his hometown. I was, uh, when he told me this, I was shocked because looking at his face, 
I could not even imagine that he could be a famous folk singer. I'll show you the picture later on, so you will be able to um, have understand my situation. And he also complained of hoarseness on singing. Now, as generally uh, patients with alopecia, they don't have any other medical conditions. And so was the case in this particular patient. He did not have any comorbidities and was not taking any medicines. He had tried all types of treatment without any success. He visited our center as a last resort. Sadly, this is what is the situation in homeopathy that people come to us as a last resort. But then if we are wise enough, if, if we are intelligent enough, we will choose us at the first choice. Homeopathy should be the first choice. Now, this reminds me of an inspiring story of uh, Swami Vivekanand. He was known as Nityanand Datta. So Swami Vivekanand, when he was eight years old, he loved to uh, climb Champaka tree. So he used to visit his uh, friend's compound where that tree was. And he used to love climbing and dangling down, neck down on that tree. So one day, his friend's uh, grandfather, he saw Swamiji doing that dangling thing. And he was very afraid of uh, Swamiji, like he may get hurt or something might happen. So the grandfather thought of something. He called Nitya and he said, uh, Nitya, uh, you shouldn't be dangling from this particular tree because it has a Brahma Rakshas, uh, uh, basically a ghost who comes at night and whoever tries to, you know, dangle down the branches, he breaks the neck of the concerned person. So Swamiji, though he was a child, he was a very respectful person and he was a very obedient person. So he listened and nodded. And uh, when the grandfather left, Swamiji again started dangling on the branches. Now his friend, his friend was seeing him and he said, right now, grandfather has asked you not to do it, but still you are doing it. Why you are doing it? So Swamiji said, don't be afraid. If this particular thing would have been true, it would have happened the first time I dangled down the branches. So it hasn't happened, so it will not happen. So Swamiji was such a person who was a curious person and he wanted to experiment. He didn't take anybody's word for the truth. He wanted to experience things. If we have such people in our community who, who want to believe in homeopathy, they should not believe that, oh, for alopecia, we don't have a good treatment. So we don't have, we don't think homeopathy has something to offer. Homeopathy has a lot to offer. But we should have people who are ready to experience homeopathy, not as the last resort, but as the first choice. So as Dr. Hahnemann has said in Aphorism 5, the ascertainable physical constitution of the patient, especially in case of chronic diseases, his moral and intellectual character, his occupation, his mode of living, his habits, his social and domestic relations, his age, his sexual function, etc., are to be taken into consideration. So when we are taking cases of um, alopecia, we need to take the patient as the whole. We need to delve deeper. See, we homeopaths are the ones who are the most humane doctors. Humane, why? Because when we take the case, the person bears his internal things to us. The, we are able to connect with that person, not only or we are able to connect him on a mental level, physical level, and even a spiritual level. Most of the patients, they come when we ask so many questions, then they will say, you have asked me so many questions. No other doctor has asked me so many questions. I feel now I'll be treated here properly. So this is what happens. And this is what Dr. Hahnemann has stated in this aphorism. We need to take each and everything about that constitution of a patient in cases of chronic diseases. More so in aphorism 190, he has also mentioned that all true medical treatment of a disease on the external parts of the body that has occurred from little or no injury from without must therefore be directed against the whole, must affect the annihilation and cure of the general malady by means of internal remedies, if it is wished that the treatment should be judicious, sure, efficacious, and radical. So we need to target, we need to give internal medicines for anything that is external, 
doesn't mean it is a superficial thing. So alopecia, though we have the external repercussions on uh, the scalp, we can see it, but it's something which must be guided with internal remedies to in order to make sure that cure is taking place. Now, keeping this in mind, we have uh, recently developed a tool which is going to help us in understanding a person deeper. This is the Goenard Johari protocol, which we have developed, and it is still in the nascent stages. Now, here we see the entire circle. This basic circle represents a person as a whole. This is any particular patient that you have. So, we have divided it into four parts. One is the arena, one is the facade, one is the blind spot, and one is the unknown. So, arena is the open area. These are the symptoms that are shared by the patients. These are the investigations we have with us of the patient. Facade is the area wherein the patient will not tell you his symptoms. We have to dive deeper in order to get those particular symptoms from him. And there can be certain habits of the persons which the person wants to hide. Apart from that, there is the blind spot is the area where certain things, certain symptoms which the attendant observes about the patient, certain things the physician observes about the patient, but the patient is not aware of that particular thing. And the last but not the least important one is the unknown area, which resurfaces in sleep or in your subconscious mind and in the form of dreams also. So that particular area is also important. If we want to understand the individual as a whole, if we want to take a proper case, reach to the similar one, we need to understand and need to open up these particular, all areas of a particular person. Now let's see how we are going to do it. So uh, the basic thing should be the other areas, all the areas of a person, we need to make them more open. So the key to having a good case is covering all the aspects of a particular person. Now, in this particular case, the rubrics that are related to the open area are hair fall. He had the problem of hair fall, which was in the form of spots, alopecia. He also had hair loss from the beard area, hair loss from the roots, and it was painful, especially to touch. And uh, he also had itching in sports. The patient also complained of weakness. There was weakness. He said that it is aggravated after sleep. Generally, it is not so in people, but the symptom he gave us that he has a lot of weakness after sleeping and weakness after mental exertion. Whenever I'm uh, going to work on a particular song, he said, like because he's a folk singer, so when I'm working on a particular song, I get tired very easily and I feel very weak. This is what happens with me and I'm not able to focus on my work as well. Now, symptoms related to the blind area. This is what the attendant, her mother was there. She told us that he has profuse perspiration and it stains the linen in spots. The patient wasn't, wasn't aware of this. Now the hidden area. Nobody wants to tell that I'm a confused or forgetful person. So same thing happened with this particular patient. He uh, was very forgetful and forgetful about what he's going to do, what business he has. And uh, he had aversion to uh, friends, even of the intimate ones. And uh, because he's a singer, so he didn't want to share that he has this problem. Uh, he has hoarseness while he's singing. So he has this problem. He wanted to hide it. And uh, this is what we were able to find out because we all are clever homeopaths. And this is very important, the unknown area, wherein uh, we had to probe a lot and found out that he dreams. He basically dreams of the business that he forgot during the day. Earlier, he had told us that he's uh, very forgetful. He forgets about the things. And those things he'll remember at night in dreams. This is the past history of the patient. He had typhoid six years back and he also had malaria. His father is suffering from hypertension 
and uh, he has a family history uh, where the mother has asthma. Now these are his desire. He had a strong desire for alcohol and even for tea. And he had an aversion to extra salt. So he didn't want, he just wanted little salt and not much salt. And he was aggravated after sleep. And he was also aggravated by heat. This is the condition that he told. Now he told us that uh, <clears throat> he sleeps a bit. Then he wakes up, he again sleeps and wakes up and that is the reason why he is aggravated. Now these are the other generalities, constipated and hard stool. Sleep is disturbed, appetite is average, thirst is dis decreased and hoarseness aggravated by singing. Now we repertorize this particular case and the prominent remedies that come up with selenium, natromule, calcarea, lycopodium. We chose selenium metallicum as the particular remedy in this particular case because it's a very a classical symptom of selenium that you dream of business, that the patient dreams of business while uh, he's sleeping in his dreams. And there are all the other symptoms that are related to. Now look at this particular person. He told me he was a folk singer, famous one. Now can you say that he looks like a famous singer. He doesn't. He looks like a child to me right now. Okay. So this was the picture before treatment where he has lots, lot of hair. You can see. So we started with a dose of selenium 200. It was administered weekly to him. He reported after a month with relief in the symptoms. He was able to sleep peacefully at night. It is uh, mentioned in selenium that they have a catnap type of sleep wherein you sleep for a while and then you wake up. So now he was able to sleep peacefully was one big huge sigh of relief for me because if this person is able to sleep peacefully then obviously he's going to recover soon. He said that hair fall had reduced a bit. The itching on the scalp had also reduced. So we decided to continue with the same treatment. And after a month he reported to us his hair fall had now stopped completely. So we were very relieved that within two months, his hair fall has stopped completely, though he still had baldness, though he was suffering from the past six years. So this is what homeopathy can do. We need to trust it more. Now there was no itching on the scalp. His hair had started growing again. So the patient was now happy and energetic with the progress. Now he was having faith in us and homeopathy as well. Now you can see this is the picture after three months. So his hair has started growing. After five months of treatment, the patient again complained of hair loss and slight itching on the scalp. Now we decided to increase the potency. Now selenium 1M was administered fortnightly to this person. Now you can see his situation. Now spots are resolving very fast. The patient reported relief in all his complaints. Hair loss had stopped and regrowth of hair was at a fast pace everywhere. Even his forgetfulness, that part, the memory had also now improved a lot. And we were happy because he was a folk singer. So for him, singing is like a life to him. So he was now able to sing without any complaints of hoarseness. And this is the situation you can see, the growth of hair after eight months. Then after nine months of treatment, he recovered completely. Now just see the patient. Now he looks like he's famous and he can be noted as a famous singer. So this is how homeopathy has helped him from first stage to here. We can see the changes here. Thanks to homeopathy. Thanks to Dr. Hanuman. Now next is another case of alopecia. Now, this case is of a 13-year-old girl who reported to our center with the problem of alopecia. She had two bald patches on the scalp since one and a half year, which were gradually increasing in size. She had taken allopathic and homeopathic treatment without any relief. Now, she was basically having two patches on her hair since the past one and a half year. She also complained of itching on the scalp. 
and she also complained of recurrent pain in the abdomen. Now, because she's a girl and generally people um, who have girls, they are just worried about how is she going to get married? She has this problem. She has this hair problem. What will their in-laws think? So she's just a child right now, but the parents were extremely worried about the child. Now, this is the past history of the patient. She had recurrent uh, cold problems and she had uh, worms recurrent in childhood. And she, uh, her mother has the problem of arthritis and grandfather has had the problem of asthma. Now here, as per the protocol, uh, she had the problem of hair fall in spots and itching in the scalp. She also had the problem of pain in the abdomen. And this is uh, one symptom which I noticed. She was constantly rubbing her nose. Uh, she was not aware of. I noticed this. This is the patient, this girl. There is one spot that is visible and other spot I'll be showing you in another picture in a while. Uh, we started the case with a single dis uh, dose of Sina 200, which was administered to the patient. After the month, the patient reported that the bald spots were increasing in size and her family was extremely worried about the disease, though the pain in the abdomen was now gone. See, it's not we homeopath, it's not homeopathy that fails, it's we as homeopaths fail. When we have failures, there's something lacking in our system. So similarly, in this particular case, as you have seen, we had a very busy uh, day that day. So we were not able to delve deeper and we were not able to take the complete history of the patient. So this uh, medicine was not able to give complete relief. We knew that this was lacking on our part. So we decided to rectify our mistake and now we took a detailed case history and repertorized the case properly to assess the condition because we didn't want homeopathy to have a bad name and not even us. So the mother informed that this girl, she's very obstinate. Whatever she wants to do, she will do, no matter what others like say. So she was very obstinate. Apart from that, the mother said she learned things very fast. She had a very strong grasping power and she was a very ambitious girl. She had completely chalked her plan like I'm going to do this and I'm then I'm going to do that. So all her career path, she had chalked out. This what, uh, is what uh, she told us. And the patient had desired for sweet food. She also perspired, uh, perspired profusely and she was a hot patient. What we observed during the entire uh, case taking, the girl was very intelligent and confident during her case taking. She was able to answer and she was able to tell things in a proper manner. And now when we did the detailed um, case history, so in the, uh, we know as per Johari protocol, we have to uh, cover all the four areas properly. So we found out about the rubrics in the open area, hair fall, Baldness in patches, head itching of the scalp, mind ambition increased, and mind company desire for. Now, this is the facade area. She was an obstinate child, but she didn't want to share with that, that with us. And after probing deeper, we found out this particular area, which is the hidden area. So, mind obstinate children. Next rubric related to the blind spot is, she was very intellectual that we found out. We asked the mother, but she said, no, she's not that intelligent. She doesn't have very good grades. But the way she had chalked down everything, ambition and the way she was answering. So we could find out that she was an intellectual person. And uh, another thing, she had a lot of perspiration. Perspiration was profuse. Now, this is very interesting. We love this unknown area. Recently, uh, in a conference, uh, Dr. Girish Gupta from Lucknow, he focused upon dreams. He said, if you are able to delve into this particular part, you'll be able to have more success. And since then, we have also delved into this particular area and we are getting greater success. So with this particular tool, when we delve into the unknown part, you have great results.
So she told us that she has anxious dreams. Then we uh, probed further. Then she said, I have dreams of boat. Then we asked, I mean, you see a boat in the ocean or what? Then she has said that I have dreams of boat foundering. This was a rubric which was difficult to find for us. She said, I feel uh, that the boat, it is sinking at a time. It is not capsizing, but it is sinking. So then we found out per this particular rubric, boat foundering. She had the desire for sweets. Her appetite was increased. Perspiration was profuse. And this is the repertorization that we have done. Lycopodium, Silesia, Phosphorus, Arsenic were the prominent remedies that came up. We started with Lycopodium, Clavitum. And it's a classical symptom wherein you'll find the, where the patient has uh, dreams of boats, which are <coughs> going to sink. Okay, now we started with a uh, dose of Lycopodium 200, which was given weekly. She reported after a month, she was feeling better and we were feeling much better because eventually we were able to do justice to this particular case. So hair fall had stopped completely now. Hair fall was not much, but still it was there and it had stopped completely. Now new hair has started appearing on the bald spots. So this was quite a relief to all of us. So we repeated the same protocol for a month. Now new hair growth was observed on the bald spots. The patient and his family were happy with her progress. Now this is the picture after two months. This is the other spot I was talking about, but I can show you the picture earlier. And this is the earlier spot. You can see uh, some hair are originating. They are growing. These are the pictures after two months of treatment. Now, after a few months, when Lycopodium 200, we uh, decided to increase the potency to Lycopodium 1M, which was given fortnightly to the, her. And she reported after a month with relief in the symptoms, which had stopped. New hair had started growing in the bald spots. Now, this is the picture after six months of treatment. We can see. We continued the same protocol. The hair had started covering now the bald spots. So we can't say that the spots were there much. The hair were also getting longer. The patient and his family were happy and we were happier. Now, this is the picture she has after eight months of treatment. The ball spots were now fully covered with the new hair. And this is the latest picture we have after 10 months. After 10 months. And I'll show you the latest as well. The patient was very happy as she was experiencing no problem at all. Her problem of alopecia was resolved. Now, this is the patient after 12 months of treatment. We can see the progression here. The relief that she has. Now let's discuss some of the important remedies that are there related to alopecia. Selenium, as we have uh, just discussed, hair fall from the brows, beard, genitals. And in that, when the person doesn't want to be combed, don't comb my hair, doesn't want the hair to be touched. And selenium is the remedy of choice. When pain is there over the left eye, which is worse, walking in the sun, and which is worse by strong odors and tea, and uh, the scalp feels tense. Then is natrimune. This medicine is useful in treating hair loss, which is due to dry crust on the scalp or hair loss due to skin disorders or menstrual disorders. And calcarea carb is a very good constitutional remedy in cases where hair loss is accompanied by increased sweating on the scalp and a cold sensation can be felt on the scalp as well. Phosphorus is very good remedy wherein uh, hair loss is in the form of a lot of patches when the hair fall is in form of bunches, when the people say that Mere to bucho mein baal gir rahe, like in bunches, and the prominent, uh, prominently, uh, prominently they are falling off from the fore, uh, forehead, and a person needing phosphorus may crave cold drinks and ice creams. And in case of lycopodium, we have just seen the particular case, and it is also very effective in treating premature graying of hair. Then comes silicia, which is a very useful remedy in case of young people who have hair loss in the frontal and the forehead regions. 
And in case of nervous and anxious disposition, these people may have cold, sweaty palms. A beautiful remedy next is arsenic album, wherein uh, circular bald patches are there along with itching and burning on the scalp. In arsenic, the symptoms aggravate in, at night and the scalp is also sensitive in such cases. Another important remedy is Vinca minor, wherein when you have uh, alopecia areata and the hair that are growing, they come, they are replaced by white hair. So this is a remedy of choice in that, in those particular cases. And apart from that, there is violent scratching over the scalp. Next is acid floricum. This is not the, uh, this is a very important top grade homeopathic remedy for alopecia areata. We have treated a lot of cases with uh, acid floor. It helps in regrowth of hair in the bald patches and it is also highly suitable medicines for hair fall after fever. Next, we have Kali Carbonicum. It is useful in cases where hair fall is from the roots. This medicine prevents hair loss and gives thick, lustrous and wholesome hair. Arnica Montana is also a very good hair medicine, which uh, improves the blood circulation and it stimulates the follicles, hair follicles, to start growing up hair. And it is also very useful in uh, treating female pattern baldness. Our next remedy is graphitis, in which there is patchy baldness on the scalp or hair fall is from the sides. And it also prevents hair loss for itchy uh, scalp where there, is, uh, there are eruptions with sticky discharge. So, graphitis is a very good uh, remedy in those particular cases. Next important hair remedy is Vespardin, where hair falls and grows rapidly and you have hard, brittle and lusterless hair. Now, beautiful remedy uh, is sulfur. Sulfur is a very beautiful remedy in which hair fall is after parturition and it is from the occiput and the eyelashes. And you have dandruff, hair is dry, the scalp is sore to touch with violent itching, which is aggravated when getting warm in the bed and washing. And hair can be gray and they can be offensive, dry, cold and hard. Now, uh, many times we see in cases of alopecia that uh, indicated remedies don't work, then we need to work more closely with uh, cephalinum antimiasmatic remedies. And they give us very good uh, results after the use of antimiasmic remedy. Uh, like if there is hair, hair loss with linear pains from temple across or from eyes backward, then it can be a remedy of choice. And uh, it causes sleeplessness and delirium at night. Hair falls profusely and tubercles are all over the scalp in case of syphilis. So a bald spot is like a lie. The bigger it gets, the harder it is to cover up. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Hello. Very nice presentation and very uh, good uh, cases you managed, successfully managed the cases. Uh, congratulations, doctor. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, those who those who are want to ask questions or uh, uh, discussion, now Madam Pravish Shah sir, unmute sir and ask. Uh, thank you, Doctor Sapna Gupta. Very nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Excellent presentation and nice. Presentation case, case, elopsia case, very nice presentation, beautiful presentation. Treat the homeopathic remedy according to law of homeopathic science. The visualization, many kinds of medicine. Very, very thanks. हम लोग दिल्ली में भी मिले थे आपके साथ हाँ 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 जो बताए थे कि बेटी हमारी जो है आयुष मंत्रालय में पुष्टि हुआ है हाँ तो थैंक यू बहुत वेरी आपके बच्चे के साथ भी बच्चे के साथ से मिले थे ठीक है वेरी वेरी नाइस बहुत अच्छा 
इसी तरह से लाइए अगेन प्रेजेंटेशन नाइस थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर आई यूज आई आई हैव सम एक्सपीरियंस आई हैड माय सम सम एक्सपीरियंसेस विद दिस केसेस सिफिलिनम एंड आर्सेनिक आयोडाइड पूजा एंड बलसेटला आई यूज इन मेनी केसेस आई गॉट अ वंडरफुल रिसर्च सच केसेस but have you ever used these medicines for the, uh, this type of cases yes sir definitely we have used these medicines thuja occidental it is a very good medicine we have also used uh, um, many nosodes as well like tuberculinum carcinosinum these remedies have given us uh, very good results when we were not able to get good results and uh, when it was indicated uh, there are a lot of medicines which i have obviously not covered but there are a lot of medicines which have given us very good uh, results uh, similarly in case of phosphorus phosphorus is a very excellent remedy that has yielded uh, good results people are coming with lot of hair fall they sometimes the patient bring their hair with us their hair like this is my bunch this is how it is falling so in those cases very nice uh, we are getting results in case of alopecia and moreover what we have seen sir is uh, if there is vitamin d deficiency we need to work on that only then uh, some failures can turn into success what we uh, saw in our practice was that like uh, in many cases we were not getting results when even the indicated remedy was given we tried other things but vitamin d levels were very low so when we supplemented that with diet and with certain supplements we were able to get very good results so uh, we should basically get a thorough check up of the patient Uh, we homeopaths tend uh, not to get it, but we should like ferritin levels. We should get checked the vitamins level, the calcium level. So because uh, everything is related to your vitamins and minerals, so that deficiency should be at the basic level. And apart from that, what we have seen, uh, like earlier, we were not much focused on diet. We just tell them in a superficial way. Now we specifically tell the patients like this is the particular foods that you have to avoid. and that reduces the inflammation and i think we are getting very good results with that particular thing so we must take a holistic view apart from medicines diet regimen and supplementation as and when required if it uh, if it helpful i have seen that kali salve is very much uh, like you what you said yeah. as a supplementary medicine we can uh, the tissue remedies can be used Kali sulf. That is very true. I had. Uh, I normally I use in many cases. All cases I use. Okay. <laughs> so now, doctor, then if she want to, uh, then if doctor, and we doctor and us. Yes. Uh, good evening, doctor Sabda. It's good really evening. a very good session, uh, and uh, you have shown the power of homeopathy with single medicine in this presentation, and uh, frankly. Uh, even though in the case uh, you gave uh, uh, Sina, but uh, unfortunately you didn't wait for uh, the Sina uh, to complete the cure. Sometimes uh, 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 that may that might have bring the uh, result if you have waited uh, for some more time because uh, as the, uh, the first symptom that the lower abdominal pain was relieved by the Sina itself, and she used to rub the nostrils all the time and. Uh, uh you didn't go for the mental symptoms so mental general the hidden symptoms of the patient in the first part but frankly usually uh, people uh, have a mental trauma in all those conditions what i have not had in these cases uh very recently i have a case of uh, this uh, uh, same uh, problem with uh, a, a child with just 10 years and she was having just like a uh, a bald her head was just like Uh, becoming more and more boldness, and uh, like a, like, any, like a man, and uh, her uh, eyebrows and uh, all those things were hairs were falling from all the part, and she was ashamed to go to school also, and her uh, uh, mother was a, a nurse working at uh, UK, and uh, when they, when she noted all these things, she was much worried. She postponed her. Uh, she resigned from her job and to look after her. Uh, and she was staying with her 
and uh, uh, they applied a lot of uh, allopathic uh, uh, cream as well as uh, medicine. They uh, the skin specialist even tried for with the uh, steroid also. So the condition was uh, becoming worse day by day. When I took the case, uh, what I found that uh, the patient was having a recurrent uh, uh, respiratory tract infection. They used to uh, give a lot of medicine for that. So uh, from the very beginning, I just give a dose of tuberculin uh, and to see what is uh, uh, her condition because of the recurrent uh, respiratory attack. Uh, and uh, later she developed asthma. So uh, when uh, during this asthma, what I found that uh, she was showing the typical signs and symptoms of pulsatilla. So I just uh, give a dose of pulsatilla later and uh, that bring a wonderful result. Along with pulsatilla, I just uh, used to give a biochemic medicine, uh, calcarea, uh, calcarea force, uh, six hours. And, uh, four tablets tedious, but uh, within three months, everything were over. She is very happy. Almost all hairs come back, and her eyebrows are just like normal. She was able to go to school, and this is the beauty of homeopathy. As you pointed out, whatever be the medicine, you will have to wait and see whether the patient is improving or not. If the once uh, the patient is improving, you can just wait. So, uh, actually. Uh, what I found that in those conditions, uh, how this develop, uh, these things developed was uh, she, uh, because of the over medication for a recurrent cold, a respiratory tract infection, uh, it was the reason behind this illness. And once they stop all those medication and we were able to go ahead with our medicine, she was uh, totally cured. Uh, as in the case of uh, lycopodium, like uh, you've shown. Of course, lycopodium like was the remedy. Uh, they used to hide things. Uh, uh, and uh, only uh, when you get uh, go into deep uh, depth, then only they start opening their uh, stories like that. And and uh, uh, but you got all these symptoms from the bystanders, and that may be the reason why you want the case and they like to put it toward the case. Anyway, uh, we hope that you can present some more cases in the future. Uh, please share your number here so that we can um, bring you more back again and again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure, sure. I'll just do that. Thank you so uh -huh. much. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Dhanesh. And uh, I just asking you one question. Have you ever by, by male type baldness? Have you ever treated? Male type of baldness. So are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's difficult to treat, but then uh, at least we can uh, help the patient in uh, stopping the hair fall. But because in that it is a scarring type of uh, uh, hair fall, so it's difficult to have the regrowth of hair. But we can just, uh, we tell the situation and we tell them like, uh, we can help you with restoring what is here, what is left. That's it. Thank you, doctor. Thank now you so the much. time is uh, running out. So now the uh, our guest came and he's from America, so uh, I am <laughs> not losing time. Now, doctor, uh, we are concluding this session and we are going to the next session, Malayalam session, our local language. So I invite doctor. Uh, doctor, th thank you very much for your wonderful presentation and everything. Thank you so uh, much. So, you are we are again and again we are calling you we will call you and you must come and now Absolutely. we are concluding I've this session my number now. also okay okay you will put it in the chat box okay, okay, okay. got it got it uh, now uh, i invite dr manush manush to do the next moderator moderation no 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 okay, okay. thank you all thank you doctor hubert 